I've never heard this before, to be honest. I've never heard this before. The fingers keep pointing, but it don't point at themselves. Huh? How crazy is this? To know that, look, within our race, it was so prominent. It was so much. But they keep pointing the finger to somebody else. No, but I won't be wrong. Hi guys, it's the Island Girl and I'm back with another reaction video for you and this one is highly overdue, alright? This one is Facts About Slavery Never Mentioned in School by Thomas Sowell. Sowell, okay? Now I did a, a, a video a couple weeks ago, British Ended Slavery, which was a shocker to me because I had no clue, wasn't taught. And so I kept seeing this in the comment section that I should check this out. So, without further ado, your girl going to get right into it, alright? So, this one came highly recommended. It's the Island Girl, you need to take a look at this one. So, that's exactly what I'm about to do. So, if you're new to my channel and it's your first time here, come on in, wrap back, put a smile on your face. Hey, Bambi. Okay, <laughs> and enjoy. To all my regular smugglers, my day one, my sweetie pies, my sweetie poos, thank you for being here with your girl. Don't forget to rock back, put a smile on your face, and enjoy. Don't know if this is something to enjoy. This is going to be an informative one. Kids are off from spring break, so they'll be going back and forth and chatting and laughing. So you don't know, Island Girl have five little babies around here, so it's a part of it. <laughs> That's what makes the channel the way it is. All right, guys. All right. Without further ado, with all this long talking, let's see what this is all about. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, okay. This excerpt is taken from the book Black Rednecks and White Liberals. Okay, now untold facts about sleep. All right. Here we go. The instrumental use of the history of slavery today also underlies the claim that slavery grew out of racism. For most of its long history, which includes most of the history of the human race, slavery was largely not the enslavement of racially different people, for the simple reason that only in recent centuries has either the technology or the wealth existed to go to another continent to get slaves and transport them en masse across an ocean. Oh. People were enslaved because they were vulnerable, not because of how they looked. The peoples of the Balkans were enslaved by fellow Europeans, as well as by the peoples of the Middle East, for at least six centuries before the first African was brought to the Western Hemisphere. Before the modern era, by and large, Europeans enslaved other Europeans, Asians enslaved other Asians, Africans enslaved other Africans and the indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere enslaved other indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Slavery was not based on race, much less on theories about race. Only relatively late in history did enslavement across racial lines occur on such a scale as to promote an ideology of racism that outlasted the institution of slavery itself. Hold up. Interesting. I can see where he's coming from with this um because there were enslavement within all different groups all different race so it can't be like as he's explaining it it, it it does not boil down to race wow wherever a separate people were enslaved they were disdained or despised whether they were different by country religion caste race or tribe in east africa the Maasai were feared slave raiders, and other African tribes, either alone or in conjunction with Arabs, enslaved their more vulnerable neighbors. As late as 1891, it was reported that Manuema slavers had demoralized surrounding tribes, destroying crops, and famine reigned everywhere. Even in the early 20th century, Abyssinians were still raiding other Africans and carrying off slaves. It was 1922 before the British had gained sufficient control in Tanganyika to stamp out slavery there. Arabs were the leading slave raiders in East Africa, ranging over an area larger than all of Europe. 
The total number of slaves exported from East Africa during the 19th century has been estimated to be at least 2 million. The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best-selling book and widely watched television miniseries, Roots, by Alex Haley. Challenged on the historical accuracy of Roots, Haley said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. This instrumental use of history, or purported history, is open to the same objections as other instrumental myth-making. Are you serious? Did he just say that with Ruth he gave people a myth to live by? Are you serious? What is wrong with these? Wow. This is crazy. This is an eye opener. I got to be honest. This is wow. Wow. Despite the impression created by Roots during the era of the massive slave trade from West Africa, a white man was more likely to catch malaria in Africa than to catch slaves himself. The average life expectancy of a white man in the interior of sub-Saharan Africa at that time was less than one year. By and large, men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere came to the coasts of Africa, bought their slaves, and left as soon as possible. Even so, the death rates among the white crews of the ships carrying slaves to the Western Hemisphere were as high as the death rates among the slaves themselves. Oh, wow. It was only much later, after quinine and other medical measures enabled Europeans to survive where there were tropical diseases, was it possible for them to invade Africa in force and establish empires there. So, basically what he's saying is like, look, it wasn't the white man who went in and started. It was being done within that race. And not only that, they couldn't go in to, en to, to, to enslave anyone. They came to the shore, bought, and left. And there were so many dying on that ship with those who, because their body could not sustain, wow, by malaria. But this is crazy. This is crazy. But by then, the Atlantic slave trade had already been ended. Oh, wow. During the era of that trade, Africa was largely ruled by Africans who established the conditions under which slave sales took place. The crew of a slave ship was in no position to defy African rulers and their armies by going out across the land and capturing people willy-nilly. The stronger African peoples captured and enslaved the weaker peoples. The same pattern found over the centuries in Europe, Asia, the Western Hemisphere, and Polynesia. In the so every, every country or every place was enslaving the weaker group, the stronger, wow. So I am part of this race, black, white, pink, blue, whatever it is, whatever tribe that is there that is stronger. So it, it, it's, it's, it's all boils down to intimidation. The stronger, the, take off the weaker. That's, that's, that's just so that's I land. The Ngoni and Yao swaggered over and terrorized other tribes. In Uganda, the Baganda made life miserable for their neighbors. And the Nioro and Hima of Anko enslaved Toro women and children. The Tutsi dominated the Hutu in Rwanda. The Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba. And the latter, in turn, held the Indorobo in a kind of serfdom. It was precisely the fact that Europeans, except for the Portuguese, seldom participated in the raids that captured and enslaved Africans that enabled most people in Europe and the Americas to remain oblivious to the traumatic experience that this was, with some Africans committing suicide to avoid capture and wives being whipped as they tried to cling to their husbands or children. Uh, can you imagine standing there watching your your own flesh and blood, your same race, your same, watch, man being ripped from your arms, the agony, the pain, and beat these wives because what? They don't want to see their loved ones go. Can you imagine the weaker ones taking their own life because they don't want to go into slavery by their own brother? This is, this is ridiculous, you hear what I say? Seldomly. A white man go in at it. This is done by their own. 
here. This is eye opening. Eye opening. This wasn't taught. It wasn't taught. That's for sure. Historian David Brian Davis pointed out that Europeans had little contact with the actual process of enslavement, oh, wow. and that as late as 1721, the Royal African Company asked its agents to investigate the modes of enslavement in the interior. Europeans typically saw only the end results, enslaved people being offered for sale on the coast. It was much the same story in the Ottoman Empire, where those who bought slaves had no idea what these slaves had been through before. Wow. The unique position of the Western world in the history, and especially the destruction of slavery, need not imply that there was unanimity within the West on this institution. In addition to whites who defended the enslavement of Africans on racial grounds, or who opposed general emancipation on social grounds, there were many whites, and even blacks, who defended slavery as a matter of self-interest as slave owners. Although most black owners of slaves in the United States were only nominal owners of members of their own families, there were thousands of other blacks in the antebellum South who were commercial slave owners, just like their white counterparts. And as Isn't that something? So, black owners, black slave owners. Wow. But sometimes when you think about it, you know, like back in the day, you see some black people in some big old houses and, and you wonder how master man get to the position that he is. You understand? I have people under them and slave under them. This is ridiculous. You, you, you have to stop and think. This is such an eye opener because the more you think about it, the, the more it really makes sense that yes, Wow, it's not just a white thing. Can you imagine? For their own beneficial gain, monetary gain. This is sad. Estimated one third of the free persons of color in New Orleans were slave owners, and thousands of these slave owners volunteered to fight for the Confederacy during the Civil War. New Orleans? Black slave owners were even more common in the Caribbean. In short, there were many defenders of slavery in the West, even in the 19th century. Wow. And outside the West, slavery was too widely accepted to require defense. No other nation ended slavery in the same way as the United States did, and few ended it after so short a struggle, as history is measured. How and why did slavery end in most of the world? There were two major processes. Over the centuries, as more and more territories around the world consolidated into nation-states with their own armies and navies, raiding those territories to capture and enslave the people who lived within them became more hazardous in itself and also risked military retaliation against the countries from which the raiders came. Wow. Thus, more and more peoples became off-limits to slave raiders over time. Put differently, the areas which remained subject to slave raiding over the centuries were primarily those where the people lived in smaller or weaker societies. Such societies continued to exist where it was difficult, for geographic or other reasons, to consolidate large areas under one government. This was true of the Balkans, the backwaters of Asia, and much of sub-Saharan Africa. By the early modern era, sub-Saharan Africa, with its numerous and severe geographic handicaps, was one of the last remaining areas from which vast numbers of people could be enslaved. That right there is an eye-opener. Jeez. You've got to be kidding me. None of this has ever been... I have never heard this before, to be honest. I've never heard this before. And to stop and think of how it really got ended. Because armies started, the stronger ones, they started to build their armies. So it was hard to come and take out my people. The force came into play. Wow. And then you keep hearing Britain this, Britain that, Britain. And you need to pay this. Britain this, Britain that, Europe did this. and you. The fingers keep pointing, but it don't point at themselves or at us huh how crazy is this to know that look within our race 
It was so prominent. It was so much. But they keep pointing the finger to somebody else. Not pointing the finger on our kind. This is sad. But what an eye opener. This one had me. This one got me. It's crazy. It's still going on today. Look how many. The weak, the, the stronger pick of the, the weaker ones within our community. Brothers wiping out each other as they, they'll put it, but they keep pointing the finger on a, on a different complexion, huh? This is sad, so sad. I hope you guys, thank you guys for recommending this one. I really do appreciate it. No, I can understand when people say pay repatriation, pay this, pay that. No. Nah. It was happening long before. It's sad. And it's still going on. I haven't stopped. Oh, yeah. This world, this world, this world. It's crazy. Some crazy stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to go in the comment section and tell me what you like me to react to next. It's the Island Girl and I'm running out of here. Love you guys and I'll catch you guys in another video. Bye. Bye.